two-part series of interviews for the United Voice News. Today we bring you part four of the interview with Ramesh Ramlochan, former bodyguard and driver to the Pandey family. What you're about to hear is a full account from Ramesh of his tenure with the Pandys. And after seeing interviews part one, part two, and part three, the pot is bubbling, it's getting hotter, and people are feeling the heat. So we invite you to sit back, be on the other side of the heat, get your drinks, get your popcorn, uh, and enjoy. This is, is putting truth to many, many rumors that we've heard in the past, but I wish to leave that, Ramesh, because this is really about you today, right? How has your ailment afflicted you over the last, the last year? I mean, I know you were once a very strong and outgoing person. You were very charismatic, and I'm feeling that you, I'm feeling a sense of downness from you. Gregory, cancer on the whole is one problem, and terminal cancer is a different thing. This is a problem uh, at nights I don't sleep. I take morphine. I take double shots sometimes. And all I do, in order for me to sleep, I have to walk. And I walk, I walk, I walk. And everybody who know me, my neighbors can tell you, they see me walking one, two, three, four. I walk till my body can't go no more, and then I go get a nap. You know, living with this colostomy, living in, in, in the state that I am in, there's other things, there's nothing works in me anymore, right, other than just the physical body going. It's a sad thing, the pain is tremendous. I have no support um, from any outside body. Uh, and this, um, there is something called the Cancer Society in Trinidad. Mm -hmm. yeah, boy, what a wash that is. They call me twice and say they are getting contact and they will get a counselor. And that is the biggest hogwash I ever hear. They should disband this Cancer Society, especially Miss St. Louis or St. Louis, who called from there two times. Knowing the condition I never call back. And I called her one time and I said, ah, well, I don't have a $500 or $800 to go to a Cancer Society fair. I have cancer. But apparently, Cancer Society is for rich and famous people who wants to dress up and go party and pretend, well, hey, we give in to something because they're getting a tax break. But really, go out and meet cancer patients like myself. You go out there and meet the poor people like myself who suffers with cancer. You'll be sad. You'll be sad to do the things they use for colostomy bags or pampers or the things they use to clean themselves. It's an expensive thing. The government doesn't contribute it. The government isn't... Look, um, for the last three months I write in the Transport Commissioner. I got in contact with the Secretary, Ms. Dick. Please highlight this, eh? Ms. Dick and the Transport Commissioner, Mr. Cato, is supposed to call me back and send me the tint on my glass. The tint is very important for me and my car. Right. Reason being, as I sit down in that car, this colors to me back at full immediately. If this is filled up, that means I have to stop anyway in the road, on the side of the road, in the traffic. And then I have to lie down in that car now and take this off, clean it. That means I have to take off my clothes. I'll be naked in that car and cleaning it. Too. Mm -hmm. You understand? So I need the privacy. The tint is not for gallery. It's for privacy. And I am begging. Now, I have been stopped many a times by police and license officers and things like that. And when I explain and I show them, of course, they, they, they understand, they're gentlemen. But they keep repeating. All you have to do is get a letter signed by the transport commissioner. <laughs> but three months now, I'm trying to get a hold of the man to no avail. Um, Ramesh, what I will do is I promise you here that I will, and the voice will, get in contact with Dr. Joe Lackies, who's the head of the Cancer Society, and we will start working on getting you some help. And we will also follow up with you, with Mrs. Kato and Mrs. Dick and everybody else in the transport division. Yeah, Mr. Kato. I Mr. have a Kato. letter for him, I have it inside. And we'll, we will help yeah. you with that. Now, I want to just make a little bit lighter or something. You know, you said that nothing works in you again, and it's basically just your heart ticking and your body yeah. that keeps going. So then you and Pan, they could be twins because from what I understand, nothing works in him either. I don't, well, I don't want to be a twin with that man. Serious. I don't want to be a twin with that man. I'd rather die a lonely, lonely man than to be a twin with that man. If it takes us, uh, and as you could see, I have my funeral tattoo on my back. I have my flag and I have my funeral plan. My daughter knows exactly what to do for my funeral. And I have made up my mind. I explained to her in detail what to do. And, and I am like this. This is not a talk. If it takes a sweat from Pandey's brow to help me now, I don't want it. From Kamala or... You know, I, I'm, I'm really lost for words. And I am not somebody who is lost for words. As you know, I am very, very talkative. Right? And you have me feeling so sad and so down now. But I want to I wanna press you a little bit further and I hope you don't mind, you know. Mr. Pandey is known for making phone calls from all over the world to do different things, including fire people, hire people, Give this one this, give that one that. 
tell me because I know you see you will be there. You were there when they yeah. were happening. Mm -hmm. What about what different phone calls do you know of and, and, and what went on? Well, I'm always on the right hand side of the phone. <laughs> I would have been one of them. I remember he calling us. He called Oscar Ramuta into the office one day and fired Oscar Ramuta for no reason. Oscar Ramuta was the communications person. Yes. Left a big man in tears. Well, for what reason? None. Because Mrs. Rayton wasn't getting along with Oscar. That's correct. Then um, he was in England. He called and he sent Gopi Singh and Wade Mark. You are the opposition leader. You want to fire somebody. You send Gopi Singh and Wade Mark and call in Ash Saigal, Indra Castillo, internal office and fire them. Fire these people just like that. And but what I mean, Ash and, 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 and Indra, what, what, what was the reason for firing them? What was the, the modus operandi? They never gave no reason. They said the boss in England, he said fire them, give them a month's salary in advance and they said send them over. Uh, they had no case to, to uh, argue because he was in England. You understand? He had fired Margaret Mohammed. Um, people who were forced to leave the job, like uh, Nicky Manet, were forced to leave the job. They forced people out of the job. It's either you run away from the job or they fire you. Or you put up with what they want you to put up with. You understand? And that is the bottom line. Now, I want to ask you a question, right? There is somebody else who is not even as close to the pandas as you are, who has been diagnosed with cancer and who has been given a lot of leeway and has kept their job. I'm talking of none other than Leah Masura. I'm sure you must know that Leah was diagnosed. Yeah. And I only found out this through the grapevine. Now, I don't know what reason she has been able to keep her job and function, but maybe you could shed some insight onto that. First of all, Leah was hired as a communication specialist mm -hmm. at the opposition office. Well, I want to take you a bet. You go to the opposition office, there's a logbook there. And see if you see Leah Matura in, in the logbook. You're employed by the opposition office and you have never been a day there. It's a, a free case. It's fraud. She collects her salary because she does underhand work for them. She do what they want and she collects her salary. It, 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 it's just like Michaela Pandey was an attorney at the opposition office. How did she get the job? Was she ever in the office? No. Nobody never see her there. Nar Narendra Lal Bihari, he was a, a, a lawyer at the opposition office. Anybody ever see him there? No, never, ever. Check the law book, and there's a law book where people have to sign in. And look for these people collecting a salary from the parliament. The government are trying to go paying these people a salary to work at the opposition office. And ask, are they at the opposition office? No. You ever see them there? No. And they talk about fraud? Well, again, you talk about the England bank accounts. So no. Look. If you ask anybody at the opposition office or people around the UNC, they will tell you how bold I am. Yes, I'm bold. A pan usually says I'm a bully and I'm brave. And you know, he likes that in me. Well, I'll tell you what, I started to voice myself. I openly stated that uh, he needed to step down. Mrs. needed to take. Mr. Warner and he likes Aramish and he needed to take the party too somewhere. I guess uh, that is what popped my bubble. I was too outspoken. Yeah, so that, that, that's the difference between, but they find another excuse now, to say I couldn't perform my duty. If I couldn't perform a bodyguard duty, if I couldn't perform that as a senior officer and train, I could certainly do administrative duties. I have a university degree you know, from the you know, University of Massachusetts in Boston. I went to college. I have subjects more than most of them. In fact, more than all of them. I remember telling Beverly Drayton that I have more qualification than she has. You understand? But again, I am not Leia Motura. I ain't whining and dining and eating and feeding the fire. I see if I have something to say, and you go and ask. Ask from the security guard to anybody in the building or the opposition or the parliament. Start with the parliament. And the people who work in the parliament say, oh yeah, yeah, he just say what he want to say. If he don't want to do something, he tell you don't do it. And if he had to say something, because I remember using the obscene against Sharma and Wade Mark. You understand? Because uh, one time me and Wade Mark had an argument over a parking space, and I tell them the only space we have is in the cemetery. You understand? Because he tells himself he's the opposition leader. And I say, well, let me tell you something, Mr. Whitman. I am not shining Mr. Pandey's ass. You understand? Because anywhere he is, you ride right there. I stand in, I stand in firm. I stand in for what I believe in. I am qualified to do what I do. I have to kiss up to somebody to get something.